Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another video where you can learn about science and how the physical universe operates. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, lightning. Yes. James, bring up that picture. OK. That's the one. So we're going to talk about what causes lightning, and we're going to talk about where lightning happens and we're going to talk, we're going to do some experiments that you can do at home using the same principle as lightning. Okay. All right. We got a bunch of people checking in here. Hi to Kanan and Jacob and Alette and Adya and Akanksha. And if I miss your name on here, I'm sorry, but we just got a bunch of people like Henry and Hartley and a bunch of people. Thank you so much for tuning in and saying hi and welcome and we hope you have fun and learn something and can do some of these things at home yes um now we probably talked before about um about electricity and remember we talked about an atom would you bring up oh by the way my name is marty and this is james and we're going to be your hosts today james bring in that picture of the atom please all right so i'm james this is marty and this is adam Except it's A T O M. <laughs> and if you, the atom has three basic parts. You've probably heard about this. If not, I'll go over it. And if you have heard it, I'll review it. There are protons and neutrons, which are in the center of the atom. And the center of the atom is called the nucleus. And you have electrons. Electrons are very, very tiny and they circle around the outside of the atom and they're what makes electricity, the motion of these electrons. Electrons can move from one atom to a, the next, and atoms are very, very tiny pieces of matter. And there are about 100 different kinds of atoms. You might have heard of some. Oxygen, iron, copper, aluminum. There are lots of them, and they all have a different number of protons and electrons. That's what makes them different. Anyway, um, this is an example. Yep. This is an example. Oh, if you have any comments, you send it in via Q&A. You probably know that already, but I thought I'd remind you. So here's my light bulb uh, over here, and here's my battery. Let, let's pull it a little bit closer towards, us, towards us. There we go. Okay. And so this has these wires. These have wires in them made of copper. And copper lets these electrons flow. So the electrons want to get away from one another. So when I attach this metal alligator clip to this, it will complete the circuit. Circuit is like a circle. And this is making circuit electricity, okay? Because it's going around in a circle or circuit. But there are some types of electricity that don't go in a circuit. It's called static electricity. And you've probably done this before with a balloon and you rubbed it on something, like I'm rubbing it here. And now when I do that, some of the electrons from my shirt are attached to the balloon. And now the balloon will attract things. It'll attract both of these. Okay, but first we're gonna talk about lightning because that's what this show is all about. Yes. What is lightning? Well, lightning is a bright flash of light that you see in the sky from a thunderstorm or a thundercloud. And it's caused by electricity. Just as when I rubbed the balloon, extra electrons got onto the balloon, when clouds rub up against one another and the parts of the clouds rub up against one another, they give off electrons. And the electrons um, go toward the bottom of the cloud and then the positive part, without so many electrons, goes to the top of the cloud. Could you bring up that picture of the thundercloud? Yes. 
there's a thundercloud. And you can see mainly at the top is positive and mainly toward the bottom is negative. And that's because these ice particles, when clouds get very, very tall, it gets cold up there, the higher you go in the atmosphere. And so these clouds get ice crystals. And when the ice crystals rub, the ice gets positive and it goes up to the top of the cloud and uh, the other parts get negative and they're toward the middle or bottom of the cloud. And when you have enough of a difference, it jumps through the air. And that's what lightning is. It's an electric current. It's not, it's not the current that we were talking about that goes all around in a circle. It's not that kind. It's static. It means it's not going around in a circle. And you can see in the cloud, it goes from the cloud to the earth, or sometimes it goes from the earth to the cloud. It always, 95% of the time, it goes from the negative area to the positive area. Okay, and the funny thing about it is it's only about as wide as your finger. That's how wide it is, but it's very, very hot. It actually, it's not hot. It heats up the air when it goes through. This electric piece of electricity, when it jumps from the cloud to the earth, it heats up the air around it. Hmm. Now, a few questions I think we'll answer before we continue on sure. to one of my favorite parts about lighting here. Uh, okay, so Alette asks, how come the electrons don't just flow into the air to get away from each other? Well, because that's a good question. They hang out with um, their other, if this is the, if this is the atom and you have two of them rubbing up against each other, one of them, remember there are protons in the middle of the atom and the electrons are sort of attracted to the positive protons. The electrons are negative. And a negative and positive are just words that scientists use to talk about opposites. And these opposites attract. So rather than the electron going off into space somewhere or it, it's attracted to the positive inside the atom. Excellent. And Kyosha asks, what do the plus and minus mean in the clouds uh, on this picture I'm showing okay, here? So the, it means that where you see the minuses, there are extra electrons. And where you see the positives, it means there's not enough electrons. Remember, atoms are made of positives and negatives. You have that picture or should yeah, I show Yeah, them? I can go back to that. Yeah. So remember, there electrons go. are made of positives and negatives. And if you look at that picture, you'll see there are four protons and four electrons. Well, atoms always have the same number of positive protons as negative electrons. But when something gets extra electrons, it's not an atom anymore. It's a different name, which we're not going to get into today because that's a little more advanced. Mm -hmm but you get these electrons that can move from different atoms uh, just by rubbing. Great. We have any other questions, James? Uh, that, that, there's a lot of questions and I'm sorry if we don't get to every question that we have. I, I have to pick just a few because I know that Marty has a lot to go over and a lot of the stuff that he's gonna talk about soon is gonna be answering some of the questions I'm seeing right now. Okay, great. Have you ever walked across the rug and turned on a light switch and gotten a shock? Yes. Have you done that, James? Yes. I've done that too. Also, my brother has walked across the room and given me a shock. <laughs> <laughs> That's what brothers do. <laughs> so uh, what happens there is when you're rubbing, just like when you're rubbing the balloon, when your feet are rubbing up against the carpet, your feet are picking up extra electrons and then your body has extra electrons. And when you touch a light switch, it, you get that electron flow from your finger to the light switch. And so that's why that happens. 
It's a tiny bit of lightning. Just a tiny, tiny bit of lightning. So <clears throat> lightning isn't hot, but it heats up the air. And it heats up the air to about 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. That's enough to toast your marshmallow, isn't it? That is. There we go. Can we see this? Yes. That's hot. That's hot. That's heat. Fahrenheit. <laughs> Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what happens is you hear thunder after that. Well, you can see lightning from as far away as 90 miles, but thunder you could only see here from maybe five or 10 miles away, depending on conditions. So once the light, once that, that lightning or the spark goes through the air, it opens up a little hole in the air. And then when the air comes back in, it collapses into that hole. And that's what we hear as thunder. It's the air clapping. Right. So um, there are a couple of experiments we're going to be doing. And, but I just wanted to tell you one other thing. There's a way to figure out how far away lightning is. Lightning travels really, really fast compared to sound, compared to thunder. So if you see lightning and you count how many seconds until you hear thunder, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, every five seconds is a mile away. So if you see lightning and you count and you count to 10 seconds, that means the lightning happened two miles away. And that could be pretty dangerous. And so that's the time to get inside the house or inside a car or out from under being outdoors. Okay, now let's do some fun things. Okay. So let's see, uh, here's a fun thing. This, is a matchstick and I put it in side of a glass and I attached it to some thread. And now I'm gonna use your shirt here, James. I knew you were here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna rub this and when I do that, there are extra electrons now. And can you see this having an effect? Yeah, um, it's dancing. It's dancing because it's attracted to the extra electrons here. Now, this is something that will also dance. I hope you can see that well. I'll hold it up, is that better? And now I'm gonna try it again. Did you see that? Can you see that on there? Yeah, I, I, I hope this is coming through all right, because this is super cool. There's a bit of that foil It's a in little there pieces hanging. of silver foil. And then when I bring this close by, it spreads yeah. out. Now you might not have one of these at home, but I bet you have one of these at home. Mm -hmm. This is just an empty container. And again, if I rub it on James's shirt and get extra electrons here. That's why I'm here. And I move it and what's happening here? <laughs> what is happening here? Maybe the table was slanted. No, now it's rolling the other way. Why do you suppose it's doing that? If you think you know, send in your answer and we'll, we'll read some of them on the air. Mm. Here's a fun thing. This is better in a dark room. You might not be able to see it here, but if you have a fluorescent bulb like this, this is a fluorescent bulb um, and it's, uh, if you, again, you rub it, I'm so glad you're here, James. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here, too. I, I, I was told and to bring the energy today, so what, now I know why. You can't see it, but if you do this in a dark room, you'll be able to see it. If we did it in a dark room, then we wouldn't be on here, and that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Here's another fun thing. Well, we've seen... We, we have a lot of people jumping into the Q&A saying static electricity static is what electricity. made the can roll around. Right. So what happened is... 
the balloon had extra negative electrons and this can had positive and negative and the positives in the can were attracted to the negatives in the balloon. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. This is something you could do at home. And I'll be honest, Marty, I've actually never seen that demonstration before. Okay. Yeah. Live and learn. Live and learn. Now you might have seen this before. I'm gonna just bring this over here. Now I'm using this because I don't have a sink here. But this is just water in here and I can control the water dripping. And if I turn this little dial, there's the water dripping out, just like it can in your sink. And if I rub James's shirt again, and I, whoa, can you see that moving? You yep. Can, you could certainly hear it. So why do you suppose it's doing that? Right now it's just going straight, but I move this over here. Needs, a, needs another rub. There we go. And I, I think if you lean in a little bit closer, you, your vest, you can oh. see the water dripping. There you go. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. It looks like we can see that good. Yeah. I think I got it wet and that makes it yeah. not work as well. But you could try this at home by the sink. Just have a little stream of water. And when, uh, when you rub that balloon, you'll see the negatives attract. Ooh, let's try this. Looks like we have a cloth to dry it, to dry it off. Yes. So here's a cloth to dry it off but it's also a cloth in case you weren't gonna be here today. It's a cloth that I can use to rub the balloon. And now this is just, see this over here? This is just yep. a box and I put a tissue here and I taped it to the box and then I cut little, uh, little fingers on the, on the tissue. And this is something you could do at home. And you see what, look at that. It's attracted to, the tissue is attracted to the balloon. This is something you could do at home. I bet you haven't seen this one either, James. Oh, this is a fun one. I'm gonna do this one next. I noticed so, that those plates were uh, sticking together. Yes, that's because I took this and I rubbed it. This would be easier than, than taking you and holding you upside down <laughs> and rubbing you on here. I'm just gonna rub I, this. I appreciate that. <laughs> and get little electrons on there. And then I'm gonna rub that and get electrons on here. And then when I put it there, nothing happens. Let's try it again. Okay. Could be because I rubbed it with the other side. As you're rubbing that, Amelia asks, why do balloons hold static electricity so well? They do, and that's a great question. And um, it's because of the material that they're made of. We'll try that. We'll try that. No, that didn't work. No, Let's boy. try one of these. Okay. One of the, I did this yesterday and this worked just fine. Let's see. That has a little hole in it, so I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I will pick you up and... <laughs> nope. Well, I'm gonna try something else. Okay. This might be easier. I'm going to rub this on James's shirt. And then I'm going to rub this on James's shirt. I, I wore my static electricity shirt today. I'm so glad. Yes. 
uh, just real quick. Henry, yes, I can see your comments. Um, I can see the comments that come in from everyone, e even if you can't. So don't worry, Henry, I do, I do see what you're saying there. Okay. So you could try this at home and maybe you'll have better luck than I will because this isn't working the way I want. But I'm gonna try something else that I bet you have never seen, James. Okay. First, I just have a little soap bubbles and I'm gonna put that on here. Okay. And I'm gonna move that on there. And now I'm going to take my handy dandy special tool, <coughs> straw, <laughs> and put that in here and make a little bubble. And now, if I take this balloon and I rub it, well, that was such a strong pull, <laughs> it burst the balloon. Did you see that? I saw it, it, it burst the bubble, yeah. Popped it right out. Yeah. So let's try it again. I won't rub it that much. You see it moving toward the balloon? I don't know if you can I see, can see it here. I, I hope this shows up well on the webcast, guys. But this is this is uh, an experiment that you can do uh, pretty easily from home. If you've got a balloon, if you've got some some bubble liquid. There, yeah, maybe that one's higher. You'll be able to see it. A little bit, a little bit. Hmm. Oh, I'll put my. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's see. I want to get a balloon in the middle there. And then I'll yeah. hold it up and see if. Can you see it being attracted? Yes. Okay. There it goes. So it's just attracted <laughs> because of static, static electricity. electricity. Exactly. Someone asked, how did people figure this stuff out? Well, you know, sometimes what happens is that's sometimes what happens is scientists or people notice something and they go huh i wonder why that happened and then they do some experiments to try and figure out why that happened that's what scientists do um and so that's how sometimes things are learned because scientists just go look at that why does that do that and then they learn about science which is how the physical universe operates. So I'm just gonna pick up a pencil that dropped because I have mm, here yes. one of my toys. I get to play with toys. This toy is called a Tesla coil and it makes electricity. Whoops, when it doesn't fall down. James, would you? It was on? not on. Did you get that? It was not on. <laughs> Here we go. Let's hide that and I'll plug this in. And if you would turn it on, James, if you'll have to hit the uh, switch. There we go. We are on. Now it is on. And if I bring this pencil near the tip, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it's showing up there. It's like it's like lightning. There's electricity, electrons at the tip there. And when I bring this pencil nearby, it's attractive. Now, what else did I want to do with it? Oh yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have a fluorescent bulb and I bring this nearby, holy cow, ah. why is that doing that? Why is it lighting up like that? This isn't attached to anything. Now, what if I did it this way? A little bit, a little bit. Ooh, there we go. But if I do it this way, it lights up. And there's no wires attached because, you know, it's static electricity. So do we have any questions, James? Okay. Um, let's see. Someone asked about using the balloon on, on, on the Tesla coil. I would have to guess that that would pop the balloon. Well, we could try it. I'm See? always willing to try. Here, here's an experiment. We, we had a question. <laughs> we had a question about the physical universe. It is something that we can make a hypothesis about. Like, you know, I, I think that when we get this balloon close to it, it's going to pop. Okay. Well, Let's I think it's it. not going to pop. Okay. I don't know. It's just a, a hypothesis is a fancy word for a guess. 
So I'm going to take this and I'm going to keep it nearby and Okay. No pop. There we go. You were right. <laughs> okay. And uh, Kanan was very concerned. He asked if we have another balloon. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see one here, so it's good that I was wrong and Marty was right. Or rather, that Marty was right and that I learned something. I, I, I wouldn't even say I was wrong. I learned that this would not pop that balloon. Okay. So full stream of water. Right. Are we done with our coil here? I think we're done with our coil. We okay. could, uh, let's unplug that and put it in a safe place. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, um, what else did I want to do? Oh, I had a couple of questions. We have a couple of questions, don't we? Remember those questions? Yep. Coming up here. I'm Dot asked, why didn't it pop? Why didn't the balloon pop? And that's, you know, you, you, sometimes you answer one question with another question. Well, it was attracted to the pencil, to the, to the, cop, uh, to the carbon, Sometimes this is called lead. In the old days, they used to use lead in pencils, but um, people found out lead, they would, people would get sick because lead is poisonous. So they use now this form of, of carbon called graphite. But some people still call it a lead pencil, but it's not really lead anymore. Um, okay. But anyway, it was attracted to the lead. Why don't we bring that over here, James, and we'll try some other things. Uh, you think it'll be attracted to the straw? We'll try this. Let's see. Experiments. I think it'll be attracted to things that are, um, that'll conduct electricity. Okay. I don't think this will conduct electricity and it's not attracted to it. Okay. I think this will conduct electricity and I think it'll be attracted to it. And I hope I don't get a shot. I was just going to say, you, you might want to insulate your hand from the can there. Try that. Yep. There Did we you go. see it? Yeah. Try it again. Okay. Now, what about, um, what about this? What do you think, James? Let's see. I, let, let's find out. I don't think we're going to get a spark off of I that. don't think we're going to get a spark. Why? Because... Well, it, it doesn't conduct electricity. It's not a metal. Yeah. It doesn't, but you know, I felt a little something. I'm going to try this. We're doing another experiment. Great experiment. Can you see up here? Yeah, that's just in frame there. No, it's not lighting up, although I, okay. I felt some electricity going through here. It's not lighting this up. Yeah. Oh, someone suggested the other end of the pencil, the eraser. Okay, we'll try or this the metal end. around the eraser. Well, we'll we'll try the eraser end. Good. Thank thank you, Henry, for that suggestion. Eraser end, nothing. The met whoa, the metal end, yes. Okay. What happened <laughs> is what happened is it was attracted there. I felt the electricity here, and it went right through the middle of the pencil, and I was holding this end ah. and I could feel it there. So I'm gonna try this. And there we go. Yep. It? So it has to be Metal, we've determined that so far. And that's all I'm going to do with this because okay. I don't want to get shocked anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but I have some questions for you now about electricity, about, about um, lightning. You have a, can you pull up that first question? Pulling it up. There's our cloud again. Here we go. Which state gets the most lightning? Which state? So we have... 50 states and the District of Columbia. And which state do you think gets the most lightning? Uh, Kansas, Kansas, Florida, Oklahoma, Wyoming. These are some these are some guesses coming in here. Well, Kansas would probably be a good guess for tornadoes, mm -hmm. but not so much for lightning. For lightning, you need thunderstorms. And while there are storms that do create tornadoes, they're not so much, there's another state that has even more than Kansas, and that state is Florida. Florida gets about three and a half thousand lightning strikes a day. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, I, I lived in Florida, and that makes sense. <laughs> that's like 
uh, more than 100 an hour. Now, how about in the US, the whole United States for one year, how many lightning strikes, how many times does lightning hit this US every year? I'll give you a minute to, to try and guess. All right, we have that question up there and we'll see these answers. Uh, let's see, someone put one and a ton of zeros. I can't count all of those, but it looks <laughs> billion, 10 billion, something like that, somewhere in that uh, range. Uh, 50,000, uh, Mackenzie says 3 million. Kai says 1 billion. All right, we got some, Denali says 1 billion. Riley just put a ton of zeros. <laughs> Kind of one at the beginning. That's a good guess, actually. Uh, Alette guesses one million. No, this is in the U.S. In the U.S. In a year. Yeah. Spencer says three million. Henry says ten million. Fifteen billion. Okay, good. So we, we've got a ton of good guesses here. Okay. Oh, well, let's see. Who says? Kai. Go ahead, Marty. The answer is about twenty-five million times. Is that what Kai said? That's what Kai said. Kai, yep. you are the man. Uh, 25 million in the US. Now here's my last question. <clears throat> in the world, how many lightning strikes are there every second? Not every year, not every month, not every day. Every second. Send in your guess. Okay. Eight million. Eight million every second. Holy cow, what a charged planet yep. that is. Someone said probably 10. Uh-huh. Let's see. Um, all right, Kai says 5,000. Nate says 1,500. Uh, Aubrey says a very, very, very big number. Every second. Yep. Okay. Mackenzie says 300,000. Wow. Nate says 20,000. Nathan says 100. Okay. Nathan, you hit it on the nose. Ah. It's about a hundred times every second. Every time I snap my fingers, there's a hundred lightning strikes happening somewhere in the world. I'm just imagining all that every second. Just... Can you guys, are, can you see that in your mind? That's quite That's a, a bit. lot. Now, let's go back to that picture of uh, the cloud with the plus and the minus. Thank you. So sometimes you have, it shows you sometimes the lightning goes from the negative to the positive, the negative part of the cloud to the positive earth. Like in the bottom, yeah, right over, can they Pretty see your sure arrow? Pretty sure they can see my mouse, yeah. Can they see your arrow? Okay. And so sometimes it does that. And 19 out of 20 times, Lightning goes from the negative to the positive. Every once in a while, it goes from positive to negative. And it look, you could even see, whoops. Yep. You could even see it going from cloud to cloud, from the positive of one cloud to the positive of another, uh, to the negative of another, whoops. pardon me. There we go. Or the cloud to the air. Sometimes you could get so many positives that it will want to jump because the air might be a little negative. So all of these things happen. Now we don't have that many, that much lightning in Oregon. Um, have you guys seen lightning before? I know some parts of the country like Florida mm -hmm. and places where there are thunderstorms, the East Coast, they have a lot of lightning. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I wonder if you got if you viewers have seen lightning before. A lot of people saying yes here. Okay. Well, there's different kinds of lightning. There's a lightning bolt that just goes, and then there's a lightning that spreads out and forks, like in that picture we had of the lightning. And there's something called sheet lightning. Have you ever seen sheet lightning? That's something where you don't see the the bolt of lightning. You don't see the thin piece of lightning coming down, but it's like the whole sky lights up. Have you ever seen that, Jay? I have, yeah. I always wondered why, why does that, what creates that? Yeah. 
Well, what creates that is it's lightning that happens very far away, and you don't see the lightning bolt, but the lightning sort of lights up the clouds. Mm. And that's why it, it's called sheet, like a sheet of paper, sheet lightning, because it's a lightning that lights up the whole sky and lights up a cloud and the cloud turns bright and then it's a big comes, sheet of light. You, sheet of light. You don't yeah. see the you don't see the bolt of light. You just see the effect of it. And that's from lightning that happens very far away. Okay, do we have any other questions about lightning? Okay. Let's see. Things are coming in very quickly into the QA box, but it looks like we've let's I just kicked the camera there. Uh, apologies. All right. A lot of people say, saying they've seen some really cool lightning. Uh, oh, what are the common colors of lightning? That's a good question. Well, I think it's, I, I've read that lightning is either a white or white with a slight yellow color. Those are the only colors that I've seen. Have you seen any other colors of lightning besides those? Have you? That's a good one. I have not. Most lightning, all lightning that I remember seeing has been white, and I think that's because there's so much energy, there's every color being represented, mm. all the colors put together, it, when, it, when it's visible light like that, makes white. Well, white is a combination of all the colors of light. Yep. Um, it, I guess it depends on the clouds too, if there are mm -hmm. any clouds or anything else in the air. Yeah. Maybe if it's a windstorm also, that kicks up some dirt and it yeah. could appear maybe an orange or something yeah. like that. Amelia says she's seen red, August says wow. purple. Wow, well I guess that's because the lightning itself is white, but maybe there's something in the air between where the lightning started mm -hmm. and where you're watching it from that gives it that color. Just like uh, watching a sunset. The sun can be all different colors at sunset, depending on what's in the atmosphere between you and the sun. Right, so do you have any other questions about lightning? Milo asks, what if lightning strikes the sea? Lightning does strike the sea quite often. All the often. time, yeah. And uh, if you're not in the water there, not a problem. If you are in the water there, that is a problem. Now, sometimes houses have what's called lightning rods. And a lightning rod is something that sticks up from the house. And then there's insulation here. Insulation means that it doesn't conduct the electricity at all. So if the lightning strikes and here's your house, but you have this insulation, it'll like absorb this lightning, this electricity, and it won't pass it on to the house. And so, um, that's why houses, if you're in the house, it's a safe place to be, or in the car. Even if your car gets hit, what, what are, what's on the wheels? Rubber. Rubber, and rubber is a good insulator. Insulation, it doesn't let the lightning go through, it sort of absorbs that. So that's why you could be safe in a car. Hey, and, and someone asked, um, when lightning strikes the ocean, does it kill fish in there? I'm sure, it could. I'm, I'm sure if fish were nearby, I'm sure it, that it would. Right, usually though fish are quite a bit underwater because uh, they like to, most fish, some fish need to, well, some things that we think of as fish like dolphins or whales need to come up and breathe. They're technically not fish. Yeah. They're technically mammals. mammals. Isn't that interesting? But uh, fish usually are much farther down in the water because the, they breathe the air that's dissolved in the water. And the lower they go, the colder the water and the more air is dissolved in the water. So if a fish is, happens to be on top or if a dolphin or a whale happens to be on top, they could get zapped pretty good. But that's usually not the case. Yeah. And if I were a fish and there's a storm happening, I'd water's probably want to go down. I, yeah. I, I would go down because well, it's just the top of the ocean. And those that don't go down don't survive. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Okay. How are we doing with questions? All right. Um, let's see. I, I'm trying to keep up with them. Um, th th there was a good question about if you are wearing rubber shoes, does that make you safe from lightning? Mm, I wouldn't try it. Um, 
if there's, let's say there's a, uh, a power cord down, you know, because of a storm. So now the, this cord that's carrying electricity falls on the ground and you're wearing rubber shoes. Well, that would be safer than if you were barefoot, but there's so much electricity. Don't forget air is not a very good conductor of electricity. Air does not usually let electricity go from one point to the other, like Like I saw like how close wires. we had to get that pencil to the right. Tesla coil, it had to be right there. Right, now these wires, these metals, the metals in here conducts electricity really well. It lets electricity, that is the electrons, flow through the wire very easily. But air, not so much. But still, air is actually a very good insulator. But what happens with lightning is you get such a big amount of electrons here, and, so, and then not many electrons here. This builds up and up and up until it just, it just gets attracted, can't hold it anymore. Yep. And it gets attracted and then it discharges. It, it lets those electrons uh, flow to the, to the positive part of the, of the uh, earth. And so um, even though rubber is a good is a good insulator, I don't know that I'd want to be wearing one because if it hits my head and my feet have insulation on it, rubber shoes, that's not gonna help my head. People die every year because they get hit by lightning. So don't you be one of them. Remember what I said about every five seconds between the time you see lightning and you hear the thunder, every five seconds means it's a mile away. So if it's a couple of miles away or less, it's time to get to safety. It's time to go inside. Because you could have, you know, you could see the lightning over here, but there's another cloud over here that could be ready to discharge. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing to do is if you're out in the, in the, in the field, maybe you're out playing, and it's starting to light, it's starting to light up. Don't run under a tree, because why? Trees are high up in the sky and they could attract that lightning bolt. And if you're sitting under the tree or standing under the tree, you could get the effects of this lightning bolt, which aren't very pleasant. People die because of this. Uh, the safest thing to do is to get inside a house or get inside a car. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I've heard people say, I don't know if you've heard people say this, James. Sometimes they, I've heard people say they can feel their, their skin sort of tingle. Yeah, their, their skin starts to tingle or like, like the, the, the hair on their arms starts to go up, like, you know, Spider-Man, Spidey Sense tingling. Right. I've heard that. I haven't experienced that myself, but the idea that there's so much charge building up in so much you, electrons. Electrons trying to build up and trying to get up. They're being pulled up by the positive uh, charge. And then the, the hair or your skin can feel that that yeah. pull. It's time to get out of there get and inside. get someplace safe. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, and a couple of people mentioned that cars are metal. So wouldn't that be less safe? Than outside, yes, they are metal. But again, you've you've got the tires there. You're inside. You're generally not touching the metal. Right. Of the as car long as itself. you're not touching the metal, you're okay. It's something a little more advanced. You could look this up if you want. Mm -hmm. Called a Faraday cage. F A R A D A Y. Faraday cage. And where my black marker? There we go. See this here? We can. And as long as you're not touching the metal on the outside of the car, you're safe. Even though the car gets hit by lightning and there's all of this electricity going through, it's something called a Faraday cage that protects you. You could find out a little more about that if you'd like.
Well, I'm glad you could join us today. Are we about out of time, James? We are out of time, which is good because I am starting to draw really <laughs> bad pictures that just really don't <laughs> communicate. They don't do a good job of showing. I'm trying to show like the lightning comes down and the cage directs the charge around instead of down and into you. But that's not a really great draw drawing. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us today. And remember, stay curious about how the physical universe operates. That's what science is, the study of nature and the physical universe. And curiosity is the cure for boredom. So I hope you stay curious about how the world works. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.